September Maumel Civil Service Commission meeting to order. Uh, I doubt we're going to have any public comment, but I'll ask for it. No public comment. First thing I'd like to do is introduce our newest commissioner, John Wells. Uh, I've known John for years, friend and neighbor, and uh, just a few doors down from me, and I'm glad I could talk him into applying for the commission. We won't hold that. We're down glad you. you're here, John. Glad to be here. Yeah, Thank I probably you. shouldn't have said that. <laughs> Even though you are somebody Billy associates with. <laughs> uh, I guess our first order of business is approval of the August 13 minutes. I know that we approve them as read, as written. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say yes. 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 Any opposed? No. Motion carries. Five to zero. Under old business, we have a discussion of proposed language changes for overlapping entry level testing. And I had emailed HR uh, over the weekend that we would have a new commissioner that might require some explanation. I think y'all have visited on this subject. Just briefly. Briefly. Do you want to give some background just quickly? Um, sure. So uh, just for uh, general knowledge, um, I did kind of bring you into, up to speed as to what the reference would be. Uh, the proposed language is to basically set up the um, priority of those uh, ranked lists uh, for candidates that are qualified for the positions of either entry level, uh, police or fire, or for the promotional testing um, and how it works when you have multiple um, active lists and how they take priority, which one takes priority, how we read over that. Um, and so the proposed change in language for the policies actually addresses how to specifically um, go through that prioritization uh, as to which one's active, how many are left on it, when it can be exhausted and continuing on to, you know, when the next one takes priority. Um, so that's what the uh, proposed language is about. Uh, the discussion will, of course, follow to to discuss any details about that, um, but that's basically the the gist of how um, the the language is is set to kind of alleviate the the what do we do with this list versus that list when we have more than one in play. So, um, and I do note in our uh, rules for both entry level and uh, promotion promotion that the commission may declare any list less than three as void. Doesn't say you have to, it says we can. So it gives us a lot of flexibility there. If we could, I would really, I think the, the promotion part of this has sort of seeped in on the side to this whole issue. If we could, for now, I would prefer we keep the discussion simply on entry level testing because I think those are two different animals, the more I've thought about them. Chief Williams, you had some comments. I didn't know whether those were for entry-level testing or promotion. I don't have any comments on the entry-level testing. How what y'all decided on that is, uh, is great with us uh, as far as the best overlapping the old list uh, until we get to the new list. Uh, and, and I'm great with that. It is the uh, promotion. I would like to. Let's save that for, for a little bit later. So let me ask a question. We have a list of three that we've passed on. Let's say there were actually six people that passed the test. What we're saying is once we get less than three of those top three, that we can either declare that list void or we can, by this rule, use it to give it priority, correct? Correct. So when we say the list, are we talking three or are we talking, let's say we had three on there and we ha had an entry level position that was filled from, from those three. Number four automatically moves up, right? Um, or do we just choose, or does the, do the, do the uh, chiefs just choose from those top three? I would view it separately from the way you describe it. So my view of it would be that when you have a test that takes place, um, say you have 20 persons test and 10 pass, 
your candidate list at that point in time is those 10 who passed. Mm -hmm. And then they take a ranked order in that list of 10. Now, if you fill a position from that list of 10, you've considered three at a time asking for, um, you know, here's what's my top three candidates, what's my next three candidates. You choose from those, you know, three at a time until you make a choice, as long as they have not been passed and dismissed or uh, deemed unqualified or basically um, for any reason type, you know, qualifications as in background or um, character or, or interview or uh, physical fitness test or any of those disqualifications. If they have not been disqualified, but just simply a different person of the three has been selected and you still have not made another disposition on the two that are requested, the two remain on the list and you just now have a list of nine. And they stay in that ranked order. If we had six people that passed every criteria. Okay, six passed every. Okay. Every criteria. If we hired someone off of those out of those top three, okay. does number four automatically automatically so move? So the up? chief requests three persons in order to consider for the open position. Is that right. correct? Okay. The chief would ask he, for he fills one. He would ask for the top three. I would give provide the top three. He would make the selection for the one vacant position as long as the other two were not disqualified they would remain on the list right. in their ranked order the one would be hired thus making the list now five versus the six and they would remain in their ranked order and okay. when we had another vacant position come open the chief would ask for another three to consider to fill and then it would be the two not disqualified and a third in the ranked order. <coughs> I think is that part, clarifying? Yeah, okay. I think part of the problem here is our police applicant numbers are so low. I mean, we're in a situation right now, right, where we've exhausted a list. Mm -hmm. I guess I'm trying to understand in the event more than one eligibility <laughs> list is in force and effect, what circumstances could that happen in? So say if we did still have the one that was just tested for, if we had any names left on a candidate list from the PD test that just took place, we're upcoming on the annual test. We could have the one year uh, that they are qualified on that original candidate list overlap the annual test. So we would have two qualified candidate yeah. lists. Okay. And therefore that's where this language comes into how do you prioritize, you know, by first in, first out, um, and how that works once you get under three on the original list, how do you work once you request three more to consider, so on and so forth. Chairman, uh, Commissioner Wells, uh, the lists are good for a year yes. from the time they're certified. <coughs> they're good for a year, and I think that's by state law, if I'm not mistaken. It's, it's uh, 12 months, uh, and the commission can extend that up to 24. Right. But no more than. Does everybody feel like they understand this issue well enough to, to vote on it? This is, I'm talking entry level only. I want to hold the other aside. Any discussion before we do? Then I will entertain a motion to approve the language uh, that uh, HR and the city attorney came up with concerning the eligibility list. So moved. Do I hear a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? <coughs> All in favor say yes. 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 Any opposed, no. Motion carries five to nothing. Chief, before we open this can of worms again, let's let you go ahead and request a, a captain's test. I think that's something on the agenda here. Yes, sir. Uh, I've come for you tonight <coughs> uh, asking that we uh, get the ball rolling. Uh, we, Captain Hanser, my training captain, and I have been looking at a November 26th date for us. What I propose is that the captain just test this this time around, and we don't do this yearly because we so seldom have a captain vote. Uh, but I think it is time to uh, get our lieutenants trained up in a captain's test. 
situation and uh, in anticipation we may have an opening next year. But we are proposing that the captain's list, our captain's list this year consists of an assessment center that uh, uh, HR and the police department will host and put on uh, promotion potential as we do in the sergeants and lieutenants test and then uh, civil service interview uh, with the uh, uh, weight of each uh, category being determined by the civil service. My thought was we would keep our oral interviews at 10% like we have them for everything else. Uh, I don't know if anybody would disagree with that. Um, any thoughts from anybody on weighing the assessment center versus the promotion potential? No, I think 10% from us is about right. Any How thought? many times have we had captains? Tonight? I don't think we've have we ever. Have we ever had a captain? I don't think exam? I've ever we been a last uh, when Captain Pickard made captain meeting. How long ago was that? That was when uh, Captain McPhail left, and I want to say five years. Huh. I don't remember. Five years ago? Were they called uh, lieutenants I back then? Exactly, but at least five. Yeah, it was prior to fourteen. Because I think I've been around here eight or nine years. I don't ever remember that. But five years ago, I could have easily yeah. forgotten. Were they called lieutenants called back lieutenants then? Okay, okay, that's the okay. deal. Okay, that's, yeah. And right. uh, you would have interviewed two of them. You would have interviewed yeah. uh, Captain Pickard and Lieutenant Collins. Yep, I'm forgetting that we changed the terminology. Chief, you have any thoughts on the assessment center versus promotion potential? I like a 60% assessment, 30% promotion potential. There's dollars in the with 10%. I think that is a fair representation. That's what I would recommend to the measure police. Oh, yeah, we just changed the terminology. Okay. Okay. So that, that actually has your written and promotion potential and your oral percentages lined out for your rules. We're already there. Okay. Yep. So where does the written fit into assessment center and promotion I'm, not, I'm requesting that we don't do a written test for that. Okay. We're going to have oh. to change something there. Yeah. <clears throat> Because according to our rules, we have had set that for 60% written. Mm -hmm. What page is that on, Mr. H? Uh, that is on page 11. Does that have an assessment center component also? No, it's a uh, written at 60% department promotion potential at 30% and civil service commission oral interview at 10%. I don't know if we changed it in the rules or not, but we clearly changed that because we had an assessment center at the last captain's. Yeah. Page 11? Yes. I don't have that on page 11. May 8, 2017, Civil Service Rules and Regs. What is your revision? 13. Oh, okay. So yeah. I, don't, I don't have that. Here's your most recent revision. Okay. What's everybody else? Look on the front page of your Rules and Regs and at the very bottom and see when your last revision was. 9, 9, 13. 13 for me. September 9th. September the 9th. 2013. 13. We need uh, updated copies of this. Sure. It's under uh, Chapter 2, Promotions, mm -hmm. and then about three pages in under Promotional Lists as the header. I do not have it. on page 11 it just is different yeah. I don't have anything about it on page 11 it's that but it just doesn't have yeah so it's got some additions section. Mr. Rizone, the 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 list on the website is also the 9913 or the rules on the website are the older ones okay okay 
Right, so we need to update not mm -hmm. only our books, but our website as well. I'll, I'll get with IT to get that new provision added on, and I'll get you copies. <coughs> if you'd like to see it, I can drop this out of my notebook and let everybody read it if they wish. You just read it to us if you okay. want um, so police captain. Yeah, let me see what yours actually has in it, the 2013 version, where it goes from. If it has anything. We voted on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah. But I'm not questioning that at all. Yeah. I just don't have okay. an updated copy. Can you so get a photocopy? Sure. Yeah, let's do that real quick so everybody can lay eyeballs on it. Yeah, because I think that as soon as it's practical is um, in the 2013 version. I think that header section was added in. Bear with us, Chief. Did you, uh, Chief Williams, yes, did sir. you ever get that uh, entrance to the level test straightened out? We figured. Sorry. We think. We <laughs> oh, yes, that, uh, that test has been removed from circulation. Oh, yeah. The bad one. Yeah. That was a that was our request. So I yeah, the two hundred dash four. Yeah. Okay, at the top of that table, you see police captain. Oh, man, yeah, this has changed. Written 60%, departmental promotion potential 30%, and uh, CSC oral 10%. So I guess the question before us is, if our rules save 60% written and the chief is requesting 60% assessment center, how do we wrangle that difference? Or can we? Or can we? <laughs> is that a question for me? That's yes, a sir. question for you. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, my legal expert. Well, we, we can always change things. It's just a matter of uh, whether we need to go about changing the rules um, formally. And I don't know if there's any variance procedure for something like that. Wow. Right. So without, <clears throat> without having looked at this in depth, I don't know that there's a variance procedure whereby we can just waive the rule. I think that the proper way of doing it is amending the rules. But that's my on-the-spot answer. I reserve the right to continue researching that and seeing if I can update it. Chief, what are your thoughts on... Uh why you prefer the 60% assessment center versus the written? It's been my experience. I have, uh, I've been a part of both systems in Little Rock and in, in Maumelle. Uh, it's been my experience that a written test probably does a uh, adequate job of determining if an applicant has a working knowledge of policies and procedures, uh, maybe traffic laws and criminal laws. Probably a pretty good thing for a sergeant or lieutenant to know. A captain, I think, is a whole different set of circumstances. I don't care near as much about a captain's ability to uh, know what a state law says or how many days you have to uh, file 
file a brief on the, the motion in a, the rule of the criminal procedure. I think an assessment center does a much better job of a person's analytical thinking, their ability to speak in public, which could easily be a part of a, a component of, of this, their written skills, their ability to manage incidents, things like that that don't lend themselves easily to a written test, but lend themselves to a practical application where you can uh, get yourself in a situation where you can demonstrate that you have real control over uh, a situation and deployment of people, uh, deployment of resources, uh, all manner of things you can do in an assessment center. Role playing is an integral part as we have the fire department in and coaching and counseling sessions and how are you going to deal with the presentation to the mayor and, and the city council and how are you going to deal with a problem employee who you may be fixed to discipline. All those things, it's, uh, it's a little more subjective, but being a captain is much more subjective than a, uh, a, a police lieutenant is. And, you know, as we know, uh, when our current chief is not <coughs> around or in town or danger, the captain that's in charge of the police department. And I just believe that a, uh, an assessment center better determines their, ca their, their, their capabilities and uh, their, their readiness to actually manage a police department as opposed to saying what the figure is, the number of students. If we desired, uh, Mr. Attorney, if we desired to change this to 60% assessment center, is that a change that we have to advertise? I think, uh, yes, sir. If we go through that process and approve that at our next meeting, is that going to give HR and the police department enough time to prepare for a November 26 test? Frankly, it will us because we, uh, Rock, we've already got that, that ball in motion uh, as far as the agencies that we'll request things from. Uh, we have already been dealing with the Little Rock Police Department and uh, obtaining some of their material and some of their ideas that are going to, uh, uh, since obviously it's already been reviewed by the human resources folks uh, and take the, the that we think are applicable to the Maumelle Police Department and use those kind of things. So yes, sir, we could easily do that as long as we kept moving forward. Are there any thoughts from the other commissioners about changing this from a 60% written to a 60% assessment center after hearing the chief's reasons for wanting to do so? I'm not asking, we're not, we can't, we're not voting tonight. I'm just saying, do you have any comments? I'm inclined to agree with the assessment over the written test, only from past experience. Request from Chief, I think. Did we change yes, sir. The, uh, I'm sorry. Can I speak on that? Yes, yes sir. Uh, if, you, if you will actually look under the fire department, questions. you will notice questions. that 60% of our scores are assessed. Before you I mean, get here. You know, the, the written the test, waiting. like Chief Williams this was this talking about, waiting. all that really tells us is if the person studied and has retention of the information out right. of the books that we ask them to take. So mm -hmm. The assessment center is actually where you find out whether the person can, can really do the job. I mean, if you look, yeah. exactly 60% of our score is assessment. Well, and I've kind of thought as you move up the ladder, so to speak, uh, in positions that I could understand the, the logic of a, an assessment center being more valuable than a written test. And I don't know if we colored outside the lines or what, but we do have some real experience with assessment centers, and they do, like I said, our previous yeah. thing was an assessment center. Mr. HR Director, will you advertise this potential rule change uh, ahead of our next meeting? Okay, sure. And we will take a vote on that then. Okay. Is it just for captains, no about lieutenants and sergeants remain the same? Just for, I think just, just for, for captains. That's what I'm asking. Just for captains. Just for captains. Does it say rule change that you're looking for from me? So on this police captain of Strictly pertaining table. to police, police captain changing the, the testing from 60% written 
to 60% assessment center. So it's literally just changing this language here. Right. Okay. Nothing else changes. It, 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 just to clarify that I'm on the same page, police cap, everyone's got the, the rules here. We're essentially taking under police captain immediately to the right, it says written 60%. We're striking through written and adding assessment. Right. 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 That okay. is the proposal. Oh, okay. Yeah. We will vote on that uh, in our next meeting. Chairman, may I make a comment? Yes, sir. Uh, as an additional consideration, could the and maybe to chief and also to the commissioners. Um, could you consider the weighting of that uh, to be somewhat of a written format, maybe following more like the fire division chief setup, and then make the assessment center part of the promotion potential and assessment center and have that weighted at 60% and then a written as a lesser percentage would that be an, uh, and this may be a question for the attorney for you know if you just varied the percentages uh, versus just striking it completely or is the goal to do away with the written I, together? I think the goal is to do away the goal is to okay all right yeah so and and just to clarify we'll need some additional language to clean up because the whole promotion is all it's all written toward the written test right. so we can exempt police captains from that uh, process, but it's not a, that's easy enough. But just to know there will be a little additional language changes. Okay, if you'll advertise that, we'll vote uh, in our next meeting, uh, which will be okay. what, October? Uh, in October, that's, yeah. as long as that's soon enough, Eighth, I think. it's not a problem. Okay, Chief, we will take this up again in October. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, under new business, it says discussion of the annual entry level testing for police and fire in October. I'm not sure what we're what we're getting at there. Sure, one second. Sorry, okay. that was your. Oh, that's HR. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, I believe I have all my notes uh, for the requests that are going forward. Um, so yes, the, uh, the request for, or discussion on annual entry level testing for police and fire. So uh, we have the obligation under our rules to do an annual test for uh, both uh, police entry level and fire <coughs> entry level. Uh, we typically do that the first weekend in October. Um, that uh, looks to be, uh, and we typically do it on a Saturday. Um, the first Saturday in October is October 6th. The second is October 13th. Um, and just requesting of the commission for approval to advertise for the entry level test for annual uh, police and fire uh, applicants uh, for the one of those two dates uh, at your leisure. And I will schedule the facility, the advertisement, <coughs> uh, request the examinations uh, be ordered uh, and get all that um, up to speed and ready to go on whichever date uh, y'all would. Do you have a preference on the date? Um, I don't at this point. Uh, I haven't seen a, a favor to one or the other. Um, I do know past history has been the first Saturday in October. Uh, so if you're just going from tradition, uh, it would be October 6th as a I guess a preference uh, just from traditional uh, but I am open to either one any discussion on that from the Commission is it the sixth or the eighth <coughs> six six or is 13. A Saturday I've written October the eighth and I don't know what that's when we're having our next meeting the that's the next meeting yeah that yeah. is the next civil that's our next meeting. meeting hopefully you aren't planning this meet on a Saturday. <laughs> no. Not if I can help. <laughs> All right, with no discussion, I need a motion to approve uh, entry level, that is police and fire, yes. Entry level police and fire testing for October 6, 2018. So moved. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any discussion? 
All in favor say yes. 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 Any opposed, no. Motion carries 5-0. Okay, we've already voted on the proposed language changes for overlapping entry level testing. In the discussion last week, I think or last month, I think this sort of bled over a bit into promotion testing, and I know uh, Chief Williams has some thoughts on that. Uh, I, uh, as we talked about, I went to the department and asked uh, the men and women in the police department that this would affect what their thoughts were on the proposed changes. And uh, one of the uh, schools of thought really resonated with me and made a lot of sense. And, one of them, and this was a real life scenario some time back when Sergeant Eli Keller made sergeant, he made sergeant off of a list that was corporal at the time, I believe, the highway test of justice. That was what at the time? It was a corporal, corporal. at the time until we changed our rank structure a little bit, but he made corporal. He got promoted on a list that did not have three people on it. Uh, we did not have three people pass the when we were talking about if we have <coughs> this overlapping list again, you could very well end up with a scenario where we had a promotion test where only two people passed it. And to make sure that we had a list of three, we would be compelled to immediately test again. The two people that just passed the test would view this as, I just beat everybody. And now you're giving them a <coughs> I just came out one or two, and you're giving the same people that just flunked the test another shot at the test. How many shots are you going to give them before they can get it and then possibly get my promotion? And that made sense to me. Uh, and I'm not going to say it would happen all the time or often, but it had happened before and could happen again. I hate people that come before me or anybody else with a problem and no solution. So here is my proposed solution. I would recommend, I would ask that if we have a promotion test, uh, if, if one person passes, and only one person passes, that stays in effect for the year or until there is nobody on the list. I don't like giving people a second shot at beating somebody, especially immediately. I mean, we can test in September, two people pass it, and the same person that flunked it in September gets to take it in October. And I don't know how the people that passed and went through the process would feel about giving them another month to get prepared for yeah. the oral, giving them another month to get to be able to pass the written. Uh, that would concern me. That, and I could see where uh, the person could consider that he was not treated fairly in those circumstances. My proposed solution would is uh, when we have a promotion test, if you pass it and get on the list, you're on it for a year. If you don't, we'll see you next year. I thought that's what, I thought that was the way we did it anyway. Uh, if you got on promotion list, it lasts for a year. Still does. I thought whether it's one, two, or three, or, or half a dozen. Well, and I, I sort of the more I thought about this in terms, and this is why I wanted to separate this discussion yes, between sir. entry level and promotion. To me, when we try to apply this rule to promotions, it's almost like finding a solution in, in search of a problem, because I don't know that we've got a problem. I agree. Uh, we don't typically run into the issue that you're in now with entry-level testing on promotions, because promotions just don't come that fast in general. So I see them as entirely separate affairs completely secretary didn't we have uh fire department have some rankings with the uh, pr last promotion had two people on it and yeah yeah and we just left it like that yeah i mean what else are you going to do yeah you know? so and to clarify this rule doesn't change that the 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 rule has been uh for a fair amount of time that the civil service commission may uh, deem a list uh, with fewer than three of eligible candidates exhausted. May. We can't. May. We and so that that is in the rules right now. This section that's being discussed is only dealing with what would happen in the event that there were two lists. Um, 
active at the same time? How do those interact with one another? Additional clarification is at the end of the promotional list section, now I'm looking at page 13, hopefully it's the same one, um, uh, there's a paragraph in there named uh, adequacy of lists, and so it's when it's determined by the Civil Service Commission a list is inadequate or shall become inadequate in a short period of time, the commission may order an examination for that rank or ranks based on need. So with this in play, you do create an opportunity if you choose to order a new examination for a list that shall become inadequate, you may create the potential opportunity for more than one eligibility list for promotion if you did that. So you do still need the solution if you, if you have it in there already in your language to create well, If the we have the flexibility to declare a list void, then how do we have two overlapping lists? In, in this case here, uh, where, where you deem a promotion list may become inadequate, so you might see the uh, potential for a ranked you know, employee or a ranked firefighter or, or police officer to be eligible for retire. You don't know if they might retire, so you deem it to become inadequate in a short period of time prior to your next annual test. So you still have a live annual test for promotion that is already qualified, but you see that you might need that position filled with more than what you have on the list currently. So you could create the opportunity for more than one list by doing that but with, if we without deem, exhausting if them. If we deem it a list void, we don't have a list to overlap. Is, is Correct. So I'm let me give you an example of where this would come into play. Let's say a sergeant takes a test or a officer takes a test to be on the sergeant's list. Let's say that's one year only one person passes. There's now a list of one. Uh, the rule has been and, and could continue to be uh, that the, the Civil Service Commission could deem it exhausted. Typically what would happen is the chief would say, you know, we don't want just one person on the list. Can you deem this exhausted and retest? But a, a more realistic would be is you have one person on the list, and then let's say you get noticed that two sergeants are planning on uh, uh, retiring next month, so or in two months. And so the chief comes in and says, well, I've only got one person on my list. We're going to need additional uh, testing, so can we issue another test? And then let's say three people pass the new test, and you have one person on the old list. What do we do? Who has priority? Does that person who passed them the first time now is he at the top of the three-person list, and then the third person bumped down? So, well, right now the rules are silent, and so what what this rule would do would say that whoever was on the oldest list remains unless there's a request to deem that list exhausted that person on the oldest list remains and then the two highest scores from the next list join that person right and so that's what this sec yeah and so and just to I, we included the language about uh the civil service commission being able to deem the list exhausted because it's in there in other sections in fact each of the two if you still have the original one, the line right above it says that, and we just didn't want it to be confusion that now th that authority was being taken away from the Civil Service Commission. Does that make sense? Does the present language in the rules and regulations address the potential issue that you're talking about? It, uh, I think, and the way we have been doing it, but it may not have been right. If we just, we had a list, if we had a list of two people on, we had a list of two people. Mm -hmm. If we had an opening, then the chief looked at the list of two people and picked number one or two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I'm just saying I, this doesn't change that process under your but if you're saying I would object to your scenario that you just described okay if we have two people uh, say I come and say well I'm, I've got a list of one person 
but I anticipate two of them. And so y'all give me another list. So now I've got a list of three. Theoretically, and no, it's not theoretically, I am allowed to pick number two and three on the list and not promote number one who just made the only person that passed that test. And I, I didn't promote them. So I have rewarded people who failed the test, came around and passed it the second time. That is correct. Mm -hmm. Virginia. Chief has that option. One, two, or three. Cor correct. So, so what you're saying is you want that first list to have to be exhausted. I want it to be entirely exhausted or the, the chief, whoever it is, not promote. Okay. Which is, a, and so if we, we which is for y'all to discuss, and then I would, if that's what we want to do, I'd just recommend we make that change and insert that language because what we don't want to ever happen is end up in a situation where we're looking at a specific person and saying, right. Joe is the one on the list and I hey, let's change the rules for Joe. Right. So do we, okay. I'll tell you, this all sounds simple when you start talking about it and it gets so slippery. I, it just does. Do we have language in our rules and regs now that would say we have to completely exhaust a promotion list before we test again? No. No. It doesn't say it that. It doesn't say that. that. That's the no. way we've been it doing it. It just gives us the option to do it. It, it. it gives us the option to do it. I kind of like keeping have the, to. I kind of like keeping the option. Now, city attorney's going to say, well, if you do that, you're going to wind up doing something for one person. And I, and I get that. Why, why, but I think we can why, handle it. Why would you say that? Well, if, if it's just one, one person per on there, got, you can't help but do it for one person. Well, you can, but if you got one person on there and he gets promoted... Then the, That's who passed then, the test. Then, it should, be then the, yeah. it should be exhausted and you start all over. So my question is, do we need to make any changes whatsoever on the promotion test? Isn't it in there? Well, m my recommendation would be, uh, uh, so to, to back up a little bit, we encountered a part where we had two different lists and <clears> wanted <throat> to know priority. And several different options we discussed. One of them is what uh, Chief is saying and the other is... The other one. So we drafted this because this that's what y'all seem to want to say. I'm in favor of leaving options, but you want it to be as objective as possible, right? Um, so so if, if the request is to write it so that uh, the person on the first list must be promoted... You're, well, so the one that leaves options is this. This allows the Civil Service Commission the authority to deem the list exhausted. Uh, it allows uh, the chief to either hire that one person from the other list or to choose from the two top applicants from the next list. I think we... And I'm, I'm getting into the zone of arguing for it, which I'm not trying to. I'm just trying to make sure that everyone understands how this would work together and interplay. I think what Chief Williams wants to do is if you've got one applicant that passes the test and you certify that test for one year mm -hmm. and he hires that one person, then you, if you, if he wants, if he's got two more openings and he wants to retest then he starts all over again. He has to, they ha he has to test those people again, those people that want to do that again. He's already hired the one man. Promoted. So, you know, if it's less than a year, we can say, okay, that is null and void. That list is null and void. And then he can have two, he can have another test and get some more applicants, That's hopefully. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Makes sense. Mm. 
<laughs> so this section only comes into play if there's more than one active list. Correct. So if, there, if there's only one active list, this doesn't come into play. And so how we got to having a list or deeming one exhausted. Why would we have two active lists? That, I don't understand that. Yeah. Why would we have two active lists? For promotion. I think that's what I'm asking yeah. is that we don't have certain areas yeah. where we have two active lists. Yeah, I can agree with that. You know, you either have, you test everybody and whoever passes is on a list for a year. There is no reason to have another list. There's no reason to have another test. Unless list. you hire list. those list. people list. and then you've got to open it again. Yeah. And that keeps well, our option open that keeps in our the event that we need to. Which is why I wonder if we need to make any changes whatsoever. I would not think On so. On promotion. Well, the, your, your captain's list from the fire department was empty when you made that promotion, and we were going to do a captain's test, no, it was not. But, but then we decided not to. No. We actually had one in each one of those. One in each one? I personally don't see where we need to change anything on promotion list. So, and I think we all have the understanding it's going to be rare for us to say we're going to exhaust that list if there's somebody on it. Right. Oh, I think it will be too. Yeah. I, I can't see any problem. With I just that. view the promotion and process that way, completely different than I do entry yeah. level. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah it's so. completely different. I just don't. I don't. I, I know there's an opportunity to have two active lists. I don't see that happening. So, then, okay. Then I would make it impossible to have two lists by saying if there's, as long as there's one person on a list, even if you have three vacancies upcoming, you can't test for it until the one, that's which will leave those positions unfilled for a longer period of time, which is fun. That's, okay. that's, that's yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That actually mm -hmm. takes some flexibility away from you. It's a lot of flexibility, yeah. How, how so? Because yeah. you would be you, unable you, you, to you, test yeah. for those other... Well, he wouldn't have but one people. person right. eligible. Right. So he doesn't have to worry about the second and the third man because he doesn't have but one person. Well, if you just have one and you promote them, that's, we've exhausted that right. list, then our hands are that's free. That's right. Yes, exactly. Right. And y'all test exactly. the same thing. And if, if, yeah. if it happens that, it, that we got the crap, and we've done this, y'all have done this many, many times, but y'all have, then you have active sergeants who can do that. Right. right. The right. only so time that we've done that a lot. Yeah. The only yeah. time that would happen is if he had three people to pass the test. Then he has the option to get that third man, or that second man, or that first man. Mm -hmm. That's the only time he has that option. Right. If you've got three or more, if you've got one, he doesn't have an option. Is the consensus of the commission that we, and I think I know where this is headed, that we not make any changes whatsoever on promotion eligibility list? Is that affirmative or not? I agree. Bo looks confused. <laughs> I'm not confused. Could be advancing I, age. I do. No, yeah, that could be too. Uh, yeah, I do agree. I mean, I just, uh, in my own mind, I don't see two active lists coming out of the commission. So I'm, I'm okay with not making any changes. Yeah. On the promotion. On promotion. promotion. On promotion list. Chief, may I ask a hypothetical question? Could a chief, not me, come to the commission, none of y'all, and say, I have one person on the list. I want three to pick from. Will y'all, can y'all immediately retest again and give me so I can always have three people to pick from? Would we? No, no, no. Could a new chief come to a new commission and say, I've only got one person on the list, I want three, I want y'all to retest the meeting. Well, that, we could, could that because could you could exhaust we, we would exhaust that we could list. Exhaust, we'd, we'd have to exhaust that list. We could exhaust that list. Without the, uh, the proposed amendment, yeah, you'd have to exhaust the list yeah. um, and, and, and create a new list. So you're back to telling me there's no way to ever have two promotions. 
I'm not. That's what everyone has told me is they want they want no way to ever have okay, two lists. So that's, right. That's, that's what I have. Yeah. I'm fine for that is fine. And and I get it maybe that I am limiting me or the next person. I I hear what you're saying there, but I, again I think in the sense of fairness, that's what I'm asking. But like okay. you point out, and we've done this numerous times, we've had a lot of acting positions. Yes, right. Mm -hmm. right. So it's yeah. not like we we can't cover. Yeah. yeah. It's not like we can't cover if we that's get into that position. Right. Okay, I'm going to ask I'm for. for it. <laughs> no, I, it gets it gets squirrely. I, I'm, I promise. I understand. All right, so I'm going to ask for no vote whatsoever on promotion list. Okay. Okay. Uh, additional comments. Without any, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. I have a motion to adjourn and second. All in favor, second. say yes. 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 Any opposed? No. Meeting. Dang, I thought I was in a city council meeting there. <laughs>